What's up? Zero to 100. All right. Fall semester 2022. And what is it today? Today is Monday, September 12th. <laughs> so it's the week of September 12th. And um, yeah, so it's the same drill. For those of you that are new to the class, there are a couple of you that are new. Again, the best way to figure out what's going on is to go backwards in time. And you can begin with the original posts that were made. This, this shows you the uh, a complete chronological succession of communication where we had you watch this article right this uh, video right here that tells you how to navigate the class and you're good and every week then i'll post a, a lecture right here like this one right here that i'm doing right now i'll be posting here's the schedule highlighted we'll give, we'll give you reminders all the time to stay on task and that's what it's all about okay awesome very cool so what are we out here we're going into our weekly assignments and we come in here, and so we've given you the setup here all right, about kind of the global issues. It's, it's, uh, really, it's really more bent towards the uh, kind of political, um, economic components to um, grappling with having this change in terms of how many older people are and how that's going to affect you individually, your local community, and then big picture, each country and how countries are looking to us, you know, and what, and then they, the, a lot of the factors that get introduced um, uh, when we look at economics are um, kind of the more financially crippling aspects. We talked about, um, uh, um, you know, the issue of the social support, okay, the entitlement programs, where we looked at uh, in our country we social security, and then we talked about, uh, um, in in this week right here, and we brought it in our 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 country's analysis in this Pew Foundation article um, about you know the the global issue of pensions and and what that means in terms of being hamstrung financially, and so you know the, there's moving forward what kind of changes have to be made. And then when we look at you know the the these diseases of aging that really are uh, a personal burden, so you know we're going to discuss you know steps to be taken that, to minimize uh, diseases of aging, but also to reflect on how it impacts you um, in terms of your overall well-being, not only your health but your financial well-being, and then you know expand it outward. So we talked a lot in the class about these um, these non-infectious, non-communicable diseases of aging that really, they, they, they last a really long time over the lifespan. And so they can have, take its toll on you personally, take its toll on you, uh, both in terms of your psychological well-being and financial well-being. And then um, the the toll that is it takes on terms of um, our country's economics and then global economics. And, uh, and uh, so uh, a big, big percentage of our country's finances our gross domestic product goes towards paying for the health care of a ever-growing older population where um, people might suffer from diabetes for 30 years or heart disease for 15 20 years cancer for 10 years and and you know at what cost in terms of um, the uh, insurance that is our social you know um, umbrella or a social protective net that is Medicare. All right, so these are all things to think about. So we're going to launch into that and gain a better, better understanding of what goes on with aging. Okay, and um, and, uh, and and maybe we can slow down the aging pro process and compress these periods of rapid decline that happen as you get older. I mean, I hate to, you know, I'm right there on, on I'm right there. You know, I've had so many um, orthopedic surgeries for being an athlete, you know, and, and certainly, and Julie, you know, had, uh, is still dealing with um, a cancer of her immune system, uh, lymphoma and leukemia. So these are, these are all, you know, issues that, that, that we have to contend with. And what can you do to, to maybe limit this? Big picture in terms of you know the uh, uh, you know um, seven and a half billion people that are in the world. All right, so um, this is a really cool video. Okay, I love this company that makes this video, so I just want you to watch it. Um, I you know, I highlighted some of the key concepts right here. Um, there's one concept is just you know um, you know we have to have this proper rate of cell division. And, and hopefully the cells that we do have, we repair them, okay? 
so that they can hang in there, you know, right? It's kind of like my big picture body, you know? Hopefully my joints work well. When they don't work well, hope, hopefully I can repair them, you know, right? So I'm doing that surgically, but here you can do this through um, how you live your life. And that's what this is all about, okay? Um, ultimately, the rate of cell division, it becomes limited in replacing um, uh, the, the dead or dying cells, okay? And um, it, they talk about this process of getting rid of the bad ones, okay? Um, when they get sickly, called apoptosis, right here, and then, um, and then, what 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 we tr really would like to do is limit these kind of lingering sickly cells. It's like having a corporation with a bunch of um, out of control, uh, dysfunctional, sickly employees. Now the corporation is not going to work as well, and that's that's what happens in our body. So. Um, and um, so, so they related to this kind of sweet spot of nutrition, okay? And this is, you know, you think nutrition not like the meal you're having tonight, but the nutrition long haul, long haul over your lifespan, long haul over a 20, 30, 40 year period, and how that is going to um, really, you know, change whether or not you're going to have um, a kind of sickly tissue. And so they relate that to this. And in, in, in what happens with overnutrition is uh, bad cells divide and make new bad cells and make new bad cells. Whereas when you limit your nutrition, uh, it gives time for some housekeeping to go in there and clean up the problems. So that when you do have cell division, you make new and better cells. So that's kind of the, the, the basis of this. And they relate it to all the diseases of aging, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, okay? And um, they didn't discuss at the very end of this concept of stem cells, okay? And, and you know, they have a limit, okay? So um, we're going to look at some uh, a unique aspect of, of cell division limitation uh, in your um, discussion when we look at reproduction, all right? Cool. So that's what that all video about. video is all about. Take it in. I'm going to then relate, there's components to that, that that is in the reading. And again, just, you know, when you're doing this, if you're new to the game here, don't forget, guys, that we, we, we expect you to open the quiz and kind of go back and forth. And you don't have to finish the quiz in one sitting. No, There's no way, okay? All righty. The goal is that if we have a better understanding of the aging process, okay, and how to improve the way our cells age, they become less vulnerable to disease. And the goal then is this kind of blue bar down here where, yes, we're going to live longer, okay? We're going to have more of a healthy lifespan. Our tissue is going to be healthier. Um, you know, we'll be able, able to defend ourselves and be less vulnerable to, you know, unique exp you know, aspects of, of life, unique environmental experiences. In the end, you're still going to have this period of decline, but if we can compress the period of decline like we see right here, um, you're going to be a lot happier as an individual. Your family is going to have less of a burden of having to deal with you, community, country, and the world as well. All right. The problem is that we, we have a little bit too much of this, and this is um, um, thought to be related to a little bit to choice. Okay. So if we can improve our surroundings, all right, so exercise and diet. How do we improve our exercise and diet? A big way we're going to learn towards the back end of this class is really um, it's surrounding yourself with the right people. Okay. Um, now you you basically um, whether it's it's nutrition. Okay. Um, or even as something as crazy as, as drinking alcohol or or drug addiction, you know, you 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 need to get rid of the triggers of bad behavior, and you need to find the triggers for good behavior, and that's what this is all about. And having the right support system is is huge. Okay, so um, what am I going to do? So we're going to look at all these different aspects. This is I, I we just put you know you have to have a subscription now. Before Business Insider was free, you need a subscription. Okay. But I took this figure from Business Insider because, you know what, it was awesome. That's why I did. You know? And so every time our cells divide, um, there's a little cap that, on the top, on the ends of our chromosomes, okay? And, and uh, this cap serves as kind of a meter of how many cell divisions you have. And each cell division, then the ability to undergo cell division slows down. And the other thing that happens importantly is that this cap helps protect your chromosomes from from mutations and damage that is is um, 
not, you know, it does not bode well in terms of the well-being of the organism. And, um, you know, making new proteins, making new parts, basically, to the machine. If the, if the instructions are altered, then, the, then the, the new parts that come out are, are bad. New proteins are bad, okay? So um, so this, this shortening contributes to DNA damage as well as lifestyle, okay? So um, it's been shown that if, if we have excessive nutrition, okay, that the, um, the ability to um, fix DNA damage goes down, so there's less housekeep housekeeping, and you just keep dividing and dividing cells, okay? And, um, and it causes exhaustion for stem cells, but it also causes damage, okay? Then what happens is one error begets another error, all right? So there's this kind of catastrophic accumulation of, of <coughs> genetic recipes um, that are wrong and then what happens is you start making more and more bad proteins and you can see it all becomes very sick of these bad proteins there are going to um uh, contribute to this what if my protein is the one that's supposed to go in there and do the repair work it doesn't work that well you got more gene problems more dysfunctional protein and then what happens is you can get these senescent cells that like i said that don't die but they hang in there okay and that's you know that's nutritionally based as well okay um so um, we go around this way, okay? Um, if your metabolic metabolism is not not correct, okay, then what what can happen is um, we generate these free radicals. Um, they show the mitochondria right here. That's our little power station. Free radicals are generated generated by burning fuel, okay? And uh, it's like a car that becomes less and less efficient over time. You start spewing more and more exhaust. And that's what's happening here. These the the, uh, the free radicals then cause DNA damage, protein malfunction, all in all. So the, what it is 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 scientists from different perspectives, you know, looked at that their, you know, basically what their specialty was, and then certain certain and then people start putting it together. And, and so there's a lot of overlap, but it's all very relevant. Okay, so this is this uh, another figure that shows you the same thing. Okay. And um, so what can we do to improve this, okay? So, you know, what diet and exercise has been shown to get rid of those bad cells, okay? Uh, get rid of the bad mitochondria, which is awesome, okay? Um, you know, again, the, you know, it's, it's called dietary restriction, but, you know, we also, you know, we have um, um, intermittent fasting, Mediterranean diet, all that is going to... Um, uh, do these molecular patterns that are good for us. Sirtuin in the video that you that you watched and AMPK. These are nutrition sensors, and they sense. Okay, this person's behaving. Let's 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 do better in terms of um, protecting the cells and the body. Okay, um, there's a lot of lot of hope in uh, in looking at anti-inflammatory drug. This is separate. Okay, as a cure, um, inflammation. Is 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 a dysfunction that happens when you have a lot of bad tissue. The immune system overshoots its mark, and you can create problems. And we look at cancer and diabetes and atherosclerosis that causes kidney failure, brain dysfunction like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, heart disease. There's always too much inflammation. So anything we can do to do that, to, uh, fix that by reducing inflammation, is key. So these are all these great concepts. Okay. Um, Lifestyle, okay. Um, this is you know everything you do, you change you change which recipes are turned on and off. Maybe we can figure out drugs that'll improve the way different genes are turned on and off. Okay. Remember, I said we lost our telomeres. Maybe we can figure out ways to selectively put them back in. All right. So this is what's all this is all about. Cool. So these are um, these are the goals. These are the improvements. All right. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go right into this article, and again, I, I want you to kind of, kind of just kind of read through this article, you know, um, as best you can with ease, okay? And um, so this goes over the theories of aging, okay? You know, is is it dialed in? Is it genetic? Is it a biological clock, okay? Or is it just kind of Jenga, this weird kind of domino effect that happens? So that's what this is all about. There, people have you know have have grappled with this for years in terms of you know how do we age? Why do we age? You know, with what is, what is the underlying um, concept in terms of this? Okay, sorry, we got some dog food being prepared in the background. Um, 
All right. So, and then ultimately, can, can we modify the course of aging? This is all what well, this is all about. And I, and I mentioned, you know, one of the big push pushes in um, in our world right now. I'm just going to highlight this is is restricting the number of calories that you bring in. So don't overeat. Okay. It's been shown that it really, really works. You know, there's the 80% rule that uh, people that believe in the blue zone accounts for. You know, when you when you reduce calories by 30%, you know, it really extends the lifespan in a lot of organisms. And there's work looking at, um, at, at human beings as well. Now, a big part of that, that pathway is when you have food around all the time, it's related in the video, then you have overstimulation of these nutrition hormones, okay? When there's food around, these nutrition hormones go whoosh, into your blood and they go to all throughout the body, especially the fat cells and what they do is they increase cell division, okay? And and um, and then all the cells that line your vasculature, they overdivide, okay? And um, and they don't take time to repair themselves. So some mutations happen, they become dysfunctional. dysfunctional. So um, this is called insulin-like growth factor right here. Um, insulin's released in response to sugar. This IGF-1 is re released in response to high levels of protein, okay? And um, and it's totally related to nutrition. Okay, um, growth hormone also causes in release, but that's a whole different story. Okay, all right. So you know, hopefully, um, we'll figure out a way to figure this out. So they um, in the in this analysis, they um, um, they reflect back. Okay, um, on some of these model systems. Okay, um, and and then look at the consequences. So again, it's it's your perspective. So if you have um, um, the situation. Where your your IGF-1 and your diabetic your um, insulin are not working very well, okay. So then what happens is from overnutrition, uh, the glucose stays longer in your bloodstream, and you start basically candy coating proteins. And that's a there's a fancy name for that, advanced glycation end product. Age, what a fun acronym, okay. What happens is these proteins get um, glucose on them. So here's a protein. Shh, here comes the glucose. Here comes the glucose. Now the protein can't do what it's supposed to do. Plus, the immune system says, "What's that?" Flips out in 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 a and attacks it. So they get cross-linked. They don't do their job. The immune system loses it, and you have inflammation. All right. So that's kind of what that's all about, right there. Okay. Okay. Um, you know the 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 idea of why we get there. Well, you know, there's this uh, this kind of this double-edged sword of of a lot of the processes that we have for that go on with aging. Okay, and that's what this antagonistic pleiotropy means. Antagonistic re reasons for the existence of these pathways. Okay, so you know the 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 classic example. Um, they talk about this p53 gene right here. Okay, and um, this this is an important gene for regulating cell damage. Okay. Um, but when it's in, when it's excessively activated, it can cause kill cells to die off. So this is the good versus the bad. The good versus the bad is inflammation. Inflammation ha is supposed to get rid of bad dying cells, help wound repair. But also, what happens is is inflammation gets a little bit ecstatic, a little bit overzealous, and it starts killing off the good tissue. Okay. So we show you the mitochondria here. Okay. And uh, what the, the, the whole idea with the mitochondria is that um, we create damage to the DNA, right? And the damage to the DNA is with respect to the, the mitochondria and other forms of free radicals that are generated. Um, though they, um, they uh, uh, you know, accumulate. So the, and if we can do something to improve our mitochondria and way to one way to improve them is to get rid of the bad ones and put in new ones to diet and exercise okay so that's what that's all about right there guys okay okay um, um this again goes back to um this you know this the the i uh, uh, insulin and igf1 pathway it has a lot to do um with um with hormones and that's you know and, and as you read through this just you know just don't get caught up in the details. But as you see, there's a lot of time spent on that. And then the rate of living goes back to our friend, the mitochondria, okay? And there is a concept that that um, that inefficient mitochondria from um, overactivation can cause aging. Right? So that's what that's all about, okay? Awesome.
All right, so um, that's kind of an overview of what that article is all about. Okay, I, I advanced it with respect to these guys right here. Okay, and then um, and then those you guys aren't bio majors, so just kind of you know you know listen to what I had to say. Say uh, breeze through that article. Okay, S watch this this video, and you'll have a real good feel for it. And then what we want you to do is go in here and um, and have a discussion. Okay, and we're going to relate some of the limitations that happen in terms of um, our stem cells, okay, in terms of cell division and how, as it relates to uh, reproductive aging, okay, both men and women, okay, so, um, so uh, you know, uh, women, you know, you basically are early on, okay, when you're embryonic, okay, you're, you are, um, you have uh, uh, 700,000 egg cells. By the time you're born, you prune it down to about 150, and then, um, and then um, ultimately, when you go through menopause, all the eggs disappear. Okay, and you're constantly losing the bad cells. Okay, when the cells get fertilized, they go through cell division, cell division, cell division, cell division. Okay, um, and so we kind of relate this to um, um, the telomere length that exists in uh, in both. Uh, our egg cells and also in our sperm cells, okay? And, and that's what this is all about, the limitation. Men, we're constantly producing new sperm, okay? Um, in our testicles and um, and the, each new sperm that comes out is not as good as the last, okay? That's the bottom line. Though. So there's this kind of reproductive aging that happens, okay? All right, so that's the background on that, relating it to, this, to what we're looking at. And then what we want you to do is go into this uh, really cool website that um, it's taking a little time to, uh, to load and consider your reproductive future, okay? So the reality of um, what happens is we're looking at, we've talked about fertility, and so you spend your whole life of, of voting, avoiding being fertile till you get your job, and you see this precipitous decline in your fertility, okay? And um, so there's this whole method for evaluating the quality of your eggs, right? Um, whether or not you can um, uh, respond appropriately to your um, um, reproductive hormones and and release high quality eggs for reproduction and, and so as you go through each of this they go through tests and you guys can kind of check that out all right okay um, go back to the weeks readings okay um, so we would you just kind of grapple with this, okay? This is the one way that it is test, you're able to test your um, uh, reproductive quality as a, as a female. And um, so every month you cycle through, okay? And um, it has to do with changes in levels of hormones being sensed by the brain. And then um, you have this follicle stimulating hormone that, will, that stimulates the movement of viable eggs that are encircled by cells that undergo cell division to make the follicle. If the cells are not dividing very well anymore, then you don't make a great follicle and you don't have the maturation of the egg. Ultimately, the brain senses it, uh, the high levels of estrogen being produced here. Boom, it creates this massive release of this luteinizing hormone, causes the egg to be released. Okay, so one way to... Um, to uh, maximize, okay, the number of eggs that cycle through is to um, basically use clomiphene citrate right here that kind of blocks the actions of, um, of, of estrogen. So then you become a kind of a super producer. So that's when we, we, we test your fertility. There's more fertility med medications indicated here that you guys should check out. And then um, when these heroic methods used to increase the um, the number and quality of eggs don't work. Then we have intro in vitro fertilization. Okay, and this is where again you can get more eggs to cycle through. Okay, you then um, do a specialized surgery to remove uh, the eggs. All right, you put them into a culture dish, you fertilize the eggs, and then when they get to the eight cell stage, you implant them back into the uterus and hope that they hope that they stick. And that's you know, um, a big issue. Down here, we look at the effect of reproduction on men, okay, and um, and this is looking at the, basically the paternal age, okay, and again, DNA damage that happens in our 
um, sperm producing cells okay so that this, then the sperm that we we produce becomes mutated and doesn't work as well and we can see um, a plot right here of, of many many different um, uh, uh, problems that happen these are um, uh, um, at the level of psychiatric and behavioral issues that um, are a reflection of um, of the age of the of the uh, of the father okay and the best way to look at right here is right here the um, the triangles okay so so yes we both participate in this alrighty guys so so it's self-paced so I want you to kind of check things out you know spend a little time um, down here in the um, in in this website and and then also reflect back on what we say right here in terms of the theories of aging okay and how um, um, as your chromosomes get shorter in your eggs limit cell division as it gets shorter for for men in terms of a sperm and uh, how that limits their function and also in terms of generation of possible mutations of both of them okay all right guys so that's it for now peace Enjoy this section, and we'll see you next time.